So, well, the big thing is we want to calculate. No calculator, because a calculator would give you this problem completely. And the thing it would be is if he's sectioned at parts like A through H, where sketching it is just one little portion, all right? And the actual sketch of it would not be that important compared to the domain, the uh, the intercepts, the symmetrics, asymptotes, increasing, decreasing, maximum, time cavity, points of flexion, and sketching. The A through G would be worth quite a few points. We'll keep that up as we go. And if I gave you a function like y equals x minus 3 to the x to the 1 third, it will either be something like this or a polynomial straight up. This is a polynomial and a root. And everybody, hopefully in your heads, you can picture y equals x, the blue curve for sure, right? And I really don't care about the negative 3, right? That's just a stretcher and a flipper. But hopefully the cube root of x, the black curve, you realize looks like the s curve on the side I put on the board here. So without much thought at all, the domain of this is x is all reals for letter A. All right, because the domain of y equals x is all reals, and the domain of the cube root of x is all reals. And it's a pretty safe bet it'd be that or a root function. So we got that going on. That's a composite of functions, right? We're, we're adding them together. The next thing is the intercepts. Well, if I'm going to do intercepts of this, hopefully we can all see pretty quickly that 0, 0 is an intercept. Do you guys agree? The harder one, there's two ways to Ah, because if you plug in 0 for x, you get 0 for y. All right? So we could for sure do that one in our head. Everybody, the thing I always like to do personally is I see a common factor of x to the third. And this is one thing without practice you usually don't see. I can pull out x to the third. If I pull out x to the third, all right, you're going to see that there's a second set of factors. You think it is, but it's not because we can set each part equal to zero. Because while you guys can pick up, while you can pick up that x equals zero, y equals zero is, is the x and y intercept. What you can't pick up is taking three halves of this, right? You guys agree to take three to the three halves, all right? Which becomes the square root of 27, right guys? Because it's 3 cubed to the half. Again, this is algebra 2, and again, sometimes when we're struggling along, we tend to forget our basic rules. So we get what? That this is plus or minus, I should have put a plus or minus here, right? x equals plus or minus 3 squared to 3. All right, so it takes a little bit of work to find the intercepts. I probably wouldn't give you one this complicated on a final. Well, it helps because we're going to graph at the end. You don't actually need them, all right? I usually don't talk about them, but if I ask for them, that would be on there. And again, some college professors, so we'd have zero, zero as an intercept, and plus or minus three squared to three, zero. Now, the bigger thing I would ask for on this one, while I might not ask for the intercepts, is, is this symmetrical? And it is. It is odd. This is an odd function. It's not periodic. You're thinking periodic, I signed it when I said that. But even odd are also are types of symmetry. Guys, this is x to the 1. This is x to the 3rd. And I'm going to start calling it f of x. I'm going to say f of x is odd. And that is huge for us. Because guess what now? We know it's symmetrical about the origin. And especially on the AP, I don't have to do anything to the left of 0. I just have to set up 0 and to the right. And what will happen is it mirrors. That is huge on this problem. Otherwise, this is a nightmare problem. Okay? Otherwise, this is a nightmare problem. So, we get here, and the next thing up, we did domain, intercepts, symmetry. At, we got to get to asymptotes. Are there any asymptotes? No. It's a root function and a line function. There are no asymptotes. Exactly. A rational function. Right. There are no asymptotes. All right. So I got those four check marks. I got five now. Now I'm asking for increasing, decreasing. And this is kind of what throws students, especially on the one that was on that take home quiz. It's still a case of where what do you need to determine increase and decrease? First derivative. And everybody, we should be able to look at this and say, yeah, the derivative of x is one, the derivative of negative three, x to the third. Exactly. So does everybody see? I'm going to call it f of x from here out. 
So the derivative is 1 minus x to the negative 2 thirds. And again, there will be problems like this on a test, not midterm 2, or final, I mean. I just get confused what the critical points are when there's like none. Okay, so we'll do that right now. I mean, on the midterm, I will say y equals this, what's y prime? I mean, it won't even be part of it. Oh. So there'll be questions just like that. Because we've done a lot. I, I guess easy would be the right word, yeah. Now, everybody, before I do the critical point, I want to do the second derivative so it's out of our way. Derivative of 1 is 0. Derivative of x is positive. Exactly. So there we go. We got the first and second derivative. So if I'm grading mid-finals, guys, I'm looking for these equations. Now, I do want to find... I do want to find... Um, uh, critical points, right? So I have those zeros, and it's not increasing or decreasing at that point, all right? All right, so we're going to do the critical points. So I, and everybody, especially AP people, writing this is huge, right? That that's an important point for us. So we write that equals 1 minus x to the negative 2 thirds. So I think, hopefully you guys see x to the 2 thirds power equals 1, all right? I think when we take the square root of when we take this, guys, do you see it's plus or minus 1? Remember your math. It's plus or minus 1. Yeah. And it's solid, it, yep. Often, when we take the square root of both sides here, we get x to the third equals plus or minus 1. Right? Because 2 thirds, so x is plus or minus 1. Now, the critical points then are just plus or minus 1. And a lot of times, even though I didn't ask for it in this time, I would know those points. So now if I want to do increasing, decreasing, all right, I don't have to do everywhere. My table is going to start at zero. I know it is just symmetrical about the origin because it's an odd function. So I got plus or minus one. So before I make my table, I'm going to set this equal to zero, okay? Now, what do you notice right away? If I Actually, if I make that a power, do you guys notice that it's just 2 over 3x to the 5 thirds? I don't think it's 0 anyway. No but, calculator all right, but I do think it's undefined at 0. You guys agree? So I would say f prime prime undefined at x equals 0. And we are to the point here where, I'm, and again, this step I'm just going to erase. Hopefully you can see it. But there's our facts. So here we are. We've done all this work. Yeah, and now we can finally make a table. And to put this in perspective, we've done all this work to get to the real work. All right, so if I go 100% on the graph, and our table, we can cheat this time because it is odd. We can cheat this time. I really want you to see what I mean by that. You just changed the time. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I'm just going to start from 0, 0. We figured out that was an intercept, oh. right? And the only points on my graph this time, the only point I need on my graph is positive 1 because it's an odd function. I don't need the negative 1s on the other side. That makes the derivative 0, right, because it's a critical point. And if I want to be cute, like if you look in your textbooks, usually they put this on there. But do I care about the other x-intercept, not particularly when it comes to increasing and decreasing, do I? So if I want to put that x-intercept on the board, just realize that, that that's not going to affect anything. So literally, guys, I only have two re three reasons to talk about signing. Do you have to worry about the derivative? Nope, because that's just, a, that's just an intercept. That, you know, so I only have three reasons to determine signing, okay, where I put those green rectangles. I need the signs in those three regions. So I look at the first derivative. Well, you know what? I think the second derivative rule sure is easier this time. What happens when I put a positive number into the second derivative? Positive, right? Because it's 1 over x to the 5 thirds. The cube root of a positive is positive. The positive number, remember, this doesn't make a number negative. That just means it's in the denominator, in the bottom. So everybody, I know right away that this is a, this is positive. So second derivative rule. When the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is positive, you know you have a local mid. Yep. 
local min by second derivative rule, right, for justification. So we can use the local min and get negative one. Absolutely, because it's odd function and symmetrical right on, okay? And maybe at this point, everybody, I would plug one into this equation up top because I want the value, and this is an easy one. One minus three is negative two. So at negative one, you'd have a max at two, right? Because these two signs would flip for the odd function. We'll do it here in a second. Make a mistake. Yeah. All right. So we got local min by second derivative rule. Now, everybody, I know that's for sure true. What's the first derivative rule say if you have local min? First derivative rule says it must go from negative to positive. So this has to be negative, and this has to be positive. You want to double check it. You can put some values in there. Yeah, I'm All right. All right, negative to positive. Everybody. All right, so I go back to what am I supposed to be doing? Holy crap, Batman. Let's pull down these letters and see what we're supposed to do. Because I got all this stuff now, right? I said concavity, points of inflection. All right. Now, if you want to make the table, we can stretch this out. I see what you're saying. You'd like to make sure you get it. So we can stretch it out. But I actually have everything in this table because we know this is the local min. And like Calista said, it's the local max on the other side. We know it's concave up from 0 to infinity, so what's it on the other side? Because the second, the sign of the second derivative here is positive. Yep, and negative is concave down. And that is not the second derivative rule, that is the concavity test, alright? Alright, so, now, the next thing up for us, and it, now, so, Megan, you were saying you just probably want to keep all the points? I would say. That's fine, and there's nothing wrong with that. So if you move these down, the other way you can do the well, zero, zero to get the points so on my graph. If I take this out of the chart and rewrite them. Some people do like to do this. And again, we realize that. And you know, you got zero, and we know this is undefined. You guys agree? Everybody, because it's an odd function, right? We know... Yep, that this is negative, and we know that over on the other side, right, between... Yes, thank you. Oh, this is... Everything got off when I shifted, I think. But we know it's symmetrical across here. Right there at our zero, so it's going to be increasing. We know it's zero and negative one to a degree. All right. So we can do this here now. All right. So at this point, and then you can write here, this is a local max, right? By a second derivative rule. So you know your max and min. So I think the max, and let's be clear about this, and we figured out that this is positive two. The max, the value of the max is two at negative one. The value of the minimum is negative 2 at x equals 1. All right? That can't be lost. So when it asks for the max and min for letter F here, my answer is the max is 2 and the minimum is negative 2 on this graph. I didn't ask where. Sometimes it asks where is it located and sometimes it asks what it is. This simply asks what it was. Finally, for concavity, we know it's concave up. From zero to infinity, and we know it's con concave down from negative infinity to zero. All right? Is there a point of inflection? There sure is, and it is at zero, right? Because there's a change in the sign of the second derivative. It goes from negative to positive. It doesn't matter that's undefined. So this is a pi. And we know that is 0, 0, because we figured out at the very beginning that it went through the origin. All right, we got everything we need. I am just going to graph half of this. All right, let's see if I can do this justice. 75%. X, Y, 0.5. 
zero zero. One, two, three. And let's call this square to three. Three times one, four. We're going to call this point what? Three squared to three. We figured out that one. And we know one negative two is the max, or min, I'm sorry, min. And we know that there is a point of inflection at zero, and we know it's concave up everywhere here. So I think concave up looks like that. You guys agree? So I think this is the curve. And then what do we have to do with this? We just have to mirror this. And I'm going to do it in uh, black so you can kind of see it. Let's see if I can do this justice. Points of inflection happen when there's a change in the sign of the concavity. You see how on the... Second derivative rule states max and min. We always use the second derivative. Oh, so the second yeah, we're look, we use the second derivative to find the sign. And any time it changes from negative positive to positive negative, you have a point of inflection. Okay. All right. And again, this is section four or five. All right. Everybody, that's the curve. So. One zero. It's increasing, decreasing, oh, decreasing. Decreasing, increasing. All right, you're right. My bad. That's why I don't do both sides of the table, point blank. That's why I don't do both sides. I just do one. I just do the green, spin it around. All right, that's why I do it. Now, I can tell from my graph, I can tell from this picture. If I call this picture up on my calculator, I can see the minimum. I can see the maximum. I know it's decreasing here. You guys agree? And increasing here. So if I gave you a calculator, you wouldn't even need to do the table to, to find those areas, those regions. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Well, that take home quiz had that, and we still struggle a little there. But I will show another one of those later, OK? All right. But again, curve sketching without a calculator. All right. And really, it comes down to justification using the first and second derivative rule.